So a common problem in Kepler and K2 data analysis is trying to understand where a noise blip in your light curve comes from. You may think it's either astrophysical or you may think it's uh, an instrumental artifact and with the light curve alone it might be hard to tell. So what you can do is look at the pixels but it might be a bit tricky to uh, associate the region and pixels uh, in the target pixel file that are associated with your light curve. So uh, one way to interactively figure that out is to use this new tool called Interact. So Interact basically allows you to inspect a given light curve of an object uh, interactively. So you just read in a target pixel file with light curve, uh, which you can normally do. Uh, and if you have it locally, it'll read it locally, and if you don't, it'll retrieve it online. And then you just run tpf.interact, and you can inspect it here. And what you get is a interactive light curve view where you can see a given cadence, what it looks like in the target pixel file, and what its light curve position looks like. You can also inspect for any given cadence what the quality flag is. Uh, and if you want, you can zoom in surrounding given cadences. So you can see this one, for example, and you can see the cadence number, the time, the time in a human readable representation, the flux, and quality flags. So this particular cadence has a quality flag code of 8192, and its quality flag uh, in a human readable form is that there's a cosmic ray in the collateral data. So that can help you inform whether you want to keep that data point or not. You can use these various tools on the side to change your view uh, in both X and Y scale. Uh, and you can zoom and see, for example, the zero point level. And see how smooth the light curve looks like on an absolute scale. You can change this window to see the screen stretch. This is on a logarithmic scale. Uh, you can also type in for a given desired cadence if you want to look at a small window. Let's say maybe this particular cadence. You can type in that number 151012. So 151012 and the cursor will go there. You can zoom out. and in. And you can also zoom in on the pixel window. So you could zoom like this, maybe change the screen stretch to an extreme value. If you want, you can hit left and right with your arrow keys. Missing data is just shown as gray. And you can also play. So if you zoom out, you can hit play. So now you can see that this up and down motion is associated with the point spread function of the target drifting over different pixels in time. You can pause and stop. Uh, you can even save images and um, turn off the hover over tooltips if you don't want them. But if you want them, you can have them back. So you might want to pass in a pre-processed light curve. So for example, you have some either a uh, downloaded light curve or you have some sort of custom-made aperture um, mask that you want to see what the light curve looks like. So in any case, uh, you have some custom light curve. And you can just go ahead and pass that into the interact function as a keyword argument here. So if you don't give it any argument, then you have the behavior from before. If you pass in a custom light curve, you can see um, that custom light curve displayed here. Uh, in the window instead. And they have to have the same, um, uh, at least some shared cadences and, and must be actually a subset of cadences that are in the target pixel file. Uh, and then you can do the same thing here and see what's happening in your custom light curve with the uh, movement of your target pixel files. You can go down to very low screen stretch and see what's going on in the background, for example like this, and see if there's anything strange. 
Okay, so that's our interact tool and uh, in order for this to work you need the bouquet tool um, that's a Python package and that is now a dependency of Lightcurve.